We are down here with the amazing Jason Kerrison from Op Shop, and you, yesterday he did an incredible speech, which I know many people would have seen. How is it for you walking into this environment? Because I know you haven't come to many protests before. What's the experience been like? Uh, it is vastly different from outside the Freedom Camping to um, Wellington. Let's say, at least say that it's, it feels very grim and dark and sombre and there are stormtroopers everywhere. Is that Wellington or here? Uh, just in Wellington. Uh, outs outside it seems like in the t central business district but then you get past the blockades and it's actually incredible, it's actually beautiful. Uh, the vibe here is just um, really relaxing, it's really empathetic. Uh, people are sharing and they're speaking from their heart and uh, I thought I was alone and I'm completely not. What's been one moment that's really touched you the most since being here? Uh, only about 10 minutes ago I had a conversation as you did with a gentleman who was brutalised uh, absolutely violently uh, this morning in an incursion that the um, police undertook in some kind of operational raid and I don't know what that was about and I don't pretend to even know or speculate really. I've heard a lot of different stories but that's the first guy I've talked to who was actually there and so man I, I started crying underneath these glasses to be honest um, and there's been plenty of times where I've you know felt the, um, felt the hurt from people and the stories that they've had um, the young lady who, whose daughter is now in a wheelchair because of these injections. The pilot today, uh, Russell, who uh, has been a, a pilot for the airline pilot for 20, 30 years. He can no longer work. He can't support his family. He also has, his father has been injured by the vaccine. Uh, you know, I've heard so many seen injury stories here and today. And your, your brother as well, My which you brother, mentioned yesterday. He's not here, but. Of course that compels me to be here and stand for him uh, and, and be here to lodge my, my disgust actually, it's not even just protest, I'm just disgusted at the dereliction of duty of the kaitiaki of the people of Aotearoa, the pe us people here that they should, they've, elected, they've been elected to look after us and represent us and it's just, it's just insane. What do you think the impact of the mandates has been like on the music industry and New Zealand as a whole? Uh, I, I can only speak for myself, so yeah. I, don't, I don't know what how it's going out for everyone else. I do know how it's occurring for uh, quite a few people because they've been in touch personally, they've messaged me personally, and it's I don't know how they're getting by. I don't know how they're looking after their families. I don't know how they're looking after themselves. I don't know where they think they're going to go next. I don't know how they're going to pay their mortgages. I know for myself. Uh, it's been two years since I've had an opportunity to actually get out and have freedom of movement to play in any venue. I can't go into a venue anymore. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I mean, fortunately for me, I'm at that point in my career where I'm not, I'm not too fussed about that. I, I'm ha about to have a baby. I'm really, I'm here for her. I'm here because when she wants, to, when she asks, when she understands enough where I was in this pivotal moment in history. I can say, although I was freaked out and scared to death almost, I showed up, honey, and yeah. like my, like your grandfather did for, uh, for both of us, for all of us in World War II. So, it's difficult because I know, I know these people, a lot of friends, a lot of colleagues, who are at a point of absolute brink, the brink of where do they go from here, um, and they can't come forward because they understand there'll be repercussions as well, and I know there are, but. We have to stand up, we can't, this is almost, to me at least, it feels like this is almost the last line. If we let them get to the point where it becomes a digital surveillance state and then we start thinking we've got to stand up, it's too late, man. Yeah. We have to push back. We have to stand our ground. And this is what a lot of people have talked about with the digital identity, identity bill and the fact that it, offer, it gives the minister who's controlling that area full immunity. So as a citizen, you can't then go and take them to court. And that's a really scary concept when you think about digital identity as a whole. If they know exactly where we are, when we are, where we've been, and they've also got maybe not mandates, but maybe they've changed the law because they seem to, behind closed doors, just be changing legislation all the time without the will of the people. I thought these guys were supposed to implement legislation that we all agreed on. Isn't that what democracy is about? And yet when this, what I would say, it's a crisis of democracy. We're not... No one here has agreed to this. Yeah. 
and I don't know what the percentage is out there, but I know what the mainstream media is telling us, and I don't trust them at all. I am beyond trusting any of that. I haven't had a TV for five years, and I, I, would, wow. I would hope that people who are just hypnotised by that narrative just turn their TV off and start thinking for themselves. But, so a friend who, um, her family's been splintered, and as many families have, because of her position, she's with us, and that she's woken up to the fact that the mainstream media isn't exactly telling the truth. And how do we know that? Because we've, we've actually got personal stories, like my brother, like the airline pilot, like, pick, you pick it, go and have a talk to someone, go and have some conversations again. But there are people out there who now don't trust the media because the media aren't telling these stories. Why aren't they asking the questions? Why aren't they actually just have, having the conversations with the people? Why are they only taking the narrative, the narrative from this rehearsed and divisive rhetoric that is scripted for them. They need to just turn the TV off, walk away and think for themselves. Freedom over fear is, is the centre of my being at the moment and that's what I feel I want to say is that this coercion and this division and this apartheid regime and make no mistake, that's what we're experiencing here. We can, you can see it. If you're still a mainstream media pundit and lover, then I feel sorry for you. And because you're only going to be caught in your own echo chamber and you're never going to know any different. What would you like to see as the outcome from the protest? I'd like to see democracy restored. I'd like to see people in the leadership representing the people. This is, this is inverted. This is not that. That's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see us move. I don't even want to see us build back better. That's just yeah. rubbish. That's the world economic that's, forum. That's, yeah, it's the old it? Carl Schwab script, <laughs> right? It's the other thing. You know, they used to call me, well, they still do call me a conspiracy theorist for believing that this Great Reset is an actual thing. But they publish books on it. You know, Carl, Carl Schwab, Schwab actually has a book called. He has a book called The Great Reset. Yeah. And, and, it, and Jacinda and obviously Justin Trudeau mm. were coached through the World Economic Forum by. Classified personally, but they got sent an official information act request, and the person had asked for all of like communication between Class Schwab and Jacinda, and he personally sent her copies of his book with notes what? saying, "I hope you liked my book." <laughs> so I mean, how, how is he getting away with being so open about this then? Well, it comes down to that whole um, mass formation hypnosis, doesn't yes, it? Yes, and cognitive and dissonance where. Yeah. You they don't up... want to think it's true because of no. the implications that they would mean. And it could even be things that they've said to their friends. You know, they'd be like, oh no, you need this trivia jab, go get it, you have to get it, all right, it's thing for you. Yeah. So part of that can be, what if you turn out to be wrong? Yes. What does that mean for you as a person, for yeah. how you've pushed that on other people? Absolutely. And so they, there's consequences inside of that. And if they don't go looking, then there's consequences inside of that too. So they need to choose, and it's time to choose. Yeah. Do you want to start thinking for yourself or you just want to be fed the mainstream media narrative? I wrote a song called Heads We Win, Tails You Lose. Mm, and song. that is directed to these guys up here. So no matter what, you guys are going to lose. So that is on YouTube at the moment. It's on all streaming platforms. And any income made from that, any profit made from that is going directly to help injured people. And I just want to get those views up. I want to get them sold. So if you want to buy them, please do that. And we will ensure that that money goes to people who need it. Would love your support. Uh, it's not under my name. It's actually under the moniker, if not us, then who. So that would be wonderful if we can get that. If not us, then who? Awesome. I love that. And it's so true. If it's not us, who's going to stand up? Because these yeah. are the people passionate enough to come and camp on Parliament grounds. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they spent two weeks on Parliament grounds with police with riot shields, yeah. with water being blasted through their tents, you know, with portaloos that, <laughs> that are pretty rough at the moment. So if not these people who are very, very strong and determined, who else will make a difference? These yeah. people are standing for all of us. So, and, and so are you, and you guys too. Yeah. Thank 100%. you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for chatting, Hank. Awesome. Yeah, that was so good. Yeah.